our medical staff uh, leader, and this is Betty. She's working um, with us to help build the medical side. So there's lots of great content coming up. This is called Medical Cadet Corps. So the whole medical side is a very significant part of what MCC is doing. So I'm going to share a presentation uh, that Dr. Betty will lead us through. Dr. Betty, thank you for joining us. Here's your presentation coming on the screen. The time is yours. Thank you and good morning. Although the, this says rank curriculum and promotion guides, that was to catch your attention. It actually will cover how to access the training modules within the Florida MCC because they're all available currently. Um, next slide. Big picture ideas that, um, one back please. Big picture ideas here is that the Medical Cadet Corps is a volunteer group. And what we're using is in Florida is fairly unique. We have reached out to a civilian emergency resource team management grouping, which is a certification process to enable people to do some very real volunteer interaction inside the United States. As everybody knows, the United States has 25 feet tall of paperwork that they want you to do to sign your name on a form to vote. I mean, it can be very complex and that's a little exaggerated, but it sometimes doesn't feel that way. So the whole idea is that the Medical Cadet Corps in Florida has reached out to a CERT training program to enable us to say, yes, we are real to either our local fire department, our local mayor, or a national resource agency like the Red Cross or FEMA management teams, it doesn't matter. We have a little piece of paper that says, I can do this and I have a team. So all the teams are broken down into groups of five and some of the most important people are these five. And in the medical cadet corps, it's a sergeant and it's the private and it's the corporal and it's the private first class. Those are the people that are the most important key to us being able to be on the ground in a place where we can not only meet a physical need, meet a social need, but meet a spiritual need because we're there and we're listening to the Holy Spirit guiding us to tell us what Jesus wants us to help other people at that particular moment in time. Our country is going to be heading into more and more disasters and events. We're, we're given this privileged information. So the more and more of us that are prepared to be able to integrate while it is still possible to do so, so that we can expose people to, I do this because Jesus loves me and I love you. That is behind the big picture behind why we choose to serve. That being said, MCC is a volunteer group. Your rank is your job. It's not related to your pay. It's not related to time and grade. It's not related to um, a reward for good service. It says, I do this particular piece of thing. So if I am a colonel in the MCC and I decide I wanted to become a team leader in a CERT team, you can go as an auxiliary member, but the person in charge of the team leader is the sergeant and you're obeying the orders of the sergeant. Interesting to note, you can also choose to give up your quote permanent rank of colonel and become a temporary rank of staff sergeant and run a squad if you wanted to. That's how it's designed. That's the importance of what the sergeants are to the medical cadet corps, okay? Next slide. Pastor Pedro, thank you very much. So everybody got a piece of paper or an email, I think it was a certificate email even that says you have been assigned and you're, this is your orders and this is what your rank is and you have permanent and temporary ranks listed on there. What in the world is that? My permanent rank is if I come from another conference that has MCC and I come in 
as a E6 sergeant, but the role that I choose to want to fill and that is open in the Florida Brigade is an E5 sergeant, I could have a temporary rank of an E5 sergeant and I'm gonna wear the E5 three sleeve, three chevron sleeve sergeant on my uniform because it's military uh, ranking structure is just for a sense of organization and it's courtesy and it's being polite. It is not to order people around. It's not necessarily authority driven. Remember, um, we're using this as a tool to be able uh, to work as small groups because in our future of our church even, the small groups are what are going to be alive. And that's where our church is going to be alive in these small groups, these small community outreaches, the individual churches having active team membership of people. That's who's going to be doing the real work. So your temporary rank is what you wear your uniform during your MCC Florida tour. Now you can be slotted. You remember those organization charts that, um, that big brigade chart that, our colonel just showed you our XO. It had all these listed captains and majors and platoons and all this. And there's a rank associated with each little slot. Well, if I am an E6 sergeant and I am in charge of a squad, I do not have to be demoted. I can be one rank up and over the top of that. Um, and you can also be training into a position because the position is open. So you can be one rank below that. Um, and that's just more a matter of the politics of politeness, okay? It has less to do with authority driven and more to do with our heart to serve. Can we have the next slide? Our curriculum has been designed to reach out into preparing you to pass with flying colors, a CERT on-site residence training program. So nested inside the Medical Cadet Corps training program, where it's underneath training, and we'll see this in another slide, there are folders that cover every single module of the CERT training program that you will cover again on site. And this is just make you pass through with flying colors. And it comes from the initial premise of the Medical Cadet Corps way back in World War I was to, World War II, I'm sorry, I guess I'm not that old. World War II that you can actually know ahead of time the mechanics of how the military worked so that you didn't get too much being picked on when you went and showed up as either a conscientious objector or as a military recruit um, and had to go serve your country in the military, even as an Adventist. And so we've taken that link and say, well, we're gonna take the training for the CERT and we're gonna change it a bit. So our CERT training, although the modules actually come from the CERT training modules, then nested inside is some spiritual tweaking and some other things that you might want to pay attention to. In addition to that CERT training, there are specialty trainings that we have put in that are very specific for information that we have as Adventists been given. Uh, we, I don't have it up yet, but we will have a class on herbs. We'll have a class on hydrotherapy. We'll have a class on other medical interventions about um, what do you do if your neighbor has a flu and you can't go to the hospital and she's elderly and she needs help and support? The thing that gets you in the door, even in your neighborhood, is that I can help you feel better. And while you're there, I'm going to pray with you if you allow me to. That's, that's the key that's opening the door. So we are going to take a lot of things that we have been given and we're going to be bringing it back our historical references to the medical information. So that's the connection between the curriculum design and our website about how the teaching modules are designed. Now let me show you why I spent so much time. If we can go to the next slide. Oh, no. We'll have to go back to the back slide. 
I guess I'll just have to use that bottom comment for right now. A recommended section of selection of each of these categories has an assigned description of this is your job. I want you to do these classes and I want you to do these trainings and I want you to have these outside resource certificates. And all those are going to be put together to say I can do this job. Next slide. So every single medical cadet corps member needs to have what's called a cadet portfolio, just a binder or a notebook. You want to keep your papers, you want to keep everything in paper, you want to keep everything in your email, and you want a record of everything. <laughs> I'll just tell you a real quick story here. I had um, all my paperwork done in paper and I kept it from being in the military. And when I went from the National Guard system to the reserve system, they had no record of my material. So I was there to work as a medical student and unless I had carried it with me saying, look, I have proof, it's right here. I wouldn't have been able to do my medical training that I was there to do, which would have been awful. So paper's good, email's good. Every email that you get that has a certificate to it goes to our adjutant at the floor brigade and the training officer because they also want it, okay? So the other thing is to put in your binder so you know where you are at is the rank curriculum grid sheet for whether you're an officer, an enlisted, or a warrant officer. Everything that you do, today's class even, there's an after action report, and that piece of feedback that comes back to you, you want to keep that email and you want to make a paper copy of it if you can, because that is important. Just like you keep copies of your diplomas from high school or your diplomas from college, you want to keep this stuff. You want to keep your CPR card, your basic first aid cards, any other training Red Cross certificate cards, those kind of things. Those are all important certificates and we're going to honor them. You do not have to repeat that training here. We're using that training. Okay. So at the bottom of this good habits is the certificate, the <clears throat> where you want to send your certificate and information to is the FlowCon Florida Conference MCC Brigade at gmail.com. You want to memorize that. And I'm going to test you on whether or not you can memorize by finding out if you know what that is. The other thing is when you send information to this Dropbox, a lot of you have same first and last names. Please include your middle name or uh, a senior or a junior, whatever it is that distinguishes you as you. And your um, FEMA student class ID number has to be on it. It usually is on the certificates that you get from FEMA that you're forwarding, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, next is our next, next. Yeah, here we go. This is the enlisted, and I'm going to enlisted first because they're the most important. This is the people doing the work of the CERT teams. If you look on the left side, these are the categories, and that green box is the same, whether you're enlisted officer or warrant officer, it doesn't matter. The categories are the same. As you look at the top, you can see there's a rank over the top in the gray box. And underneath it are these small boxes with lots of tiny print. This is online that you can print out and look at, or you can look at later. So as you see, the rank is up top. On the top of this, you can see that our team leaders are privates, private first class corporals. Our team leader is an E5 sergeant. Our squad leaders is a staff sergeant. And our platoon leader is a sergeant first class. And you could have as many of those as we need based on the size of recruits of people that you bring in to work with you. Next slide. Looking a little closer, I highlighted again, the green box is the categories, which are the same. Your requirements to fill a rank, let's say private E2, is that they have gone from being a bear recruit, which is a 999 position number. So they're not slotted somewhere, which slot actually comes to you from the brigade, says that I have done FEMA independent study, 100 class, 200 class, 700 class, look under emergency management. That's where all those FEMA classes are slotted. That's what that category is about. Thank you, Pedro. If you go up one box, it says medical. What in the world is a medical class? 
somebody in your church or in the brigade is hosting a first aid class, that's what that is. Um, there are also things that don't actually have an outside certificate. If you look up at medical certification, if I take a CPR class, CPR from the Red Cross, and I get a certificate, that checks that box. So even though I'm a private E2, I've now checked a private first class. That is where these classes and certificates become important to your rank because I can look at a group of people and hopefully most of the time, if I see a private first class in my class, I have a pretty idea, pretty good idea that they know the language of the FEMA emergency management gobbledygook because it's just stuff you got to go over to learn. And I know that somewhere in that scale, they're learning, oh, you need to go one back. I know that they're learning the language for a cert team because that's the FEMA IS317 class. That is not on site, that is on the web line and it gives you the language of what cert is. If you wanna know what cert is, go do that class. It's really a nice one. Okay, let's go to the next group here. The warrant officers are um, same organizational categories on the left green box, but these are people that we have, that are outside of chain of command, quote unquote, they're officers because they are there to intervene or interpose whatever spiritual guidance that they have for that event or that point in time. They also have to have, if you look at warrant officer one, they need to be basic first aid certified, CPR certified, the FEMA classes for understanding the languages, and the FEMA IS-317. They also do pick up another class, 240. And that's just the language of leadership. How does it, how do you recognize good leadership skills? What are the different varieties of leadership, mentoring processes that happen? How can I interact with my platoon leader who's the direct leader in charge of this particular group and have it be effective and positive about reinforcing where they're at. Um, this, if you also want to go down the sheet, you look at there's a drill requirement for basic drill, one for physical training. The officers have a little bit of a break. They have to take one class in physical training and then they're anticipated to maintain physical fitness. And that's just because I'm not sure our um, brigade chaplain wants to go lifting 50, 100 pound sacks every day. So it's up to them. If we can go to the next slide. I think I covered a lot of this. The chaplains actually, because they're not actually inside quote chain of command, they actually need a recommendation from their, their board or their pastor or somebody to be involved into this particular position. Because if I see a warrant officer in the medical cadet corps, I'm gonna tag them for, somebody needs them to go pray, somebody needs to do intervention and prayer over here, I'm gonna say, hey, can you do this for me? Because that's what they're there for. And so that person has to be available for spiritual guidance, for mentoring, for um, psychological support, for prayer intervention. These are our prayer warriors and we want to utilize them. So when you recognize them, you, and you see that rank, you know, that's going to be a prayer warrior. I want their help. Next slide. And then the next is the officers. This is the same thing, the same categories on the left green box, the same thing over the top. Uh, Alex went over some of what that is. Now officers are going to be placed in the brigade at first because we don't have enough people to do a battalion, just to let you know. So we have a brigade and right now our brigade XO is also our company commander because we don't have that many people for a command yet. But when that becomes available, we get more people, it will happen, okay? So you can actually see once again, there are trainings listed inside. So if you have been assigned as a second lieutenant, you wanna look at the list, you wanna go down that list and see what it is that you need to do. The FEMA classes are online. The organizational leadership class is actually available as a document online. And there's a little thing at the end of these that says 
has a question or two in them that you can actually fill out, send back to the training officer or to the adjutant on that fancy Florida Brig MCC uh, email and let them know that you did that and then you'll get credit for it. Now what's the point of all this? Remember your portfolio, that notebook that you had? That notebook keeps all this stuff that you've done. You get your position appointed to you by the brigade. So if there's a slot for company commander open, and I've been a platoon leader for a year, and I have my little notebook, and I'm going to an MCC hosted event where the personnel board is meeting, I can apply for that position or that slot because it's open. And then I'm going to give them my, my folder and say, here this, and then they're going to interview and say, you really want to lead out in service this way, which of course at this point, I hope you say yes. So. That's the idea behind promotions being designated by not only what you know and the civilian certificates you have, but also by information that you've been learning through your time in the Medical Cadet Corps. Why is that so important? The United States is the most litigious country in the world. And if you have a certificate that says I can do first aid, I, as a good Samaritan, stopping by the road for somebody who is changing their tire and the car jack falls down on their foot and breaks their ankle, I'm not anticipated to have to be a car mechanic, but I'm expected to know how to help them not walk on that broken ankle and to help them get help for that broken ankle. That's the Good Samaritan coverage. And every state tweaks the Good Samaritan laws a little bit. CERT has a different tweak to what it wants you to know for the legality of how to, when you help people. Remember, we're in a country where if you get a cup of hot cocoa from McDonald's, you can sue because it's too hot because there wasn't a warning label on it. So this is to protect not only you, it also is to protect the person you're, you're helping and it's to protect the fact that we are representing Christ and we want to do things within our cultural structure as correctly as we can. So we're not rocking anybody's boat. Next slide. We can do the next slide, please. Oh, okay. Medical officers have special interest in medical stuff. If you look medical personnel, they have additional classes they can take. If my interest is running social networking, then I can take some of these public information officer classes. That's an important task now, being able to connect on Twitter and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook is an important task. And it's actually how we keep connected. Um, the CERT personnel have their own requirements because our, we will have CERT trainers eventually inside our own organization, so we will be using our own organized trainers. Start this next year, January, um, and I think the next three meetings we have at MCC, we're going to try to bring in the CERT training and host an on-site training. It's probably been moved back to January and hopefully it will still happen and we won't be too COVID based by then. Okay, next slide. Uh, so how do I find all this stuff? Here's the website. Go to the website. Next slide. There's a little thing that looks like a book. This is where all these forms, manuals and resources are. And if you click on that, underneath there's this little long slot that says manuals. To the right of that, there is a little X. And if I hit that with my little mouse, I get the actual all what manuals are currently available. And if you look, if I am a sergeant and I want to know what my role is and what my requirements are, I can find it by clicking enlisted rank. And then I can print it off and I can put it in my portfolio. And that way I know what's expected of me and I know where I want to go. And if I want to become an officer, then I know where to look. Now, officers are servant leaders. They're there to serve the sergeants. I'm sorry, guys, but this rank stuff is incredibly misleading. The sergeants are the people who are going to be actively interacting with our community, our community resources. And although our brigade officers have roles to play, most of it is to encourage you 
to go out and help people. And that's really what it is. We're, help, we're here to help you serve other people. You want to do the next slide? Okay, so how to find all these classes? Same thing. Go to the website. Look underneath training. This is your magic most used box. Every single category that you had a requirement for, there is currently something in one of these boxes. So if you go to the spiritual tab and you click tab, you'll find something under there. Oh. If you go to the medical tab, you can click the little X and you'll find the medical things. Now, if you go down to the bottom here, there's one that says taking vital signs. If you've not done how to take vital signs before, back up, then it will actually show you how to do vital signs. Most of it's online, so you've got to have some kind of a link or connection. A lot of them are resourced also to additional YouTube videos. This is actually something we will have on site also. And it's something that you're going to get tested on. Also. Okay. So there's some emphasis that you want to, I want to go medical. I have an EMT dude. Who do you think I'm going to get to help me teach that? Him, of course. Right? So let your training officer know. Because your training officer, Francisco Fabuloso, is supposed to be helping coordinate what you know, what you want to know, and where you want to go. Okay. So that is how that works. And it doesn't matter what tab, if you go back two slides now, ping, ping, one more slide back. Every single tab there has something in it that you can now take. And every single class has a checkoff that at the end of the class, there's a, I have questions I've got to answer. And that piece of paper goes to Francisco and says, hey, I did this. What do you think? And Francisco is going to say, yeah, I think you did it, or no, you got to do it again, okay? Just be letting you know that he's between you and me. <laughs> Next slide. One more. Yeah, there we go. The other classes that have been underneath every single rank curriculum, that big spreadsheet, is that the ACS has a disaster response class. This is the Adventist learning community. This is for if we decide not just to do a CERT team for our community, but we decide to go help the ACS outreach event and we've done their class, they're going to say, oh yeah, sure, come, right? So that's why all this paperwork and layers and layers seem to be there. And it's a tool to get to make this a very active group participating in lots of different places, whether it's going all the way down south to Florida or all the way over to Alaska. This is what will enable us to be able to do that. Now, the FEMA independent study classes are language. They're online. Um, the CERT training classes is got to be certified on site, which we will bring on site. Was that me? No. OK, so that's how it all fits. Anybody have any questions? After this class, after each event, there is going to be an after action report. And it's a list of questions. And you're going to answer them and send them back to our adjutant, who's then going to send you back, yes, you completed it. And then you're going to take that email and put it either in your email folder that says MCC, or you're going to take and put it in a piece of paper, or you're going to do both. I hope you do both, but that's how it starts. Okay. I think I'm done. I don't know whether I'm ahead or behind. But... Anybody got a question? You're a mute, Pedro. You're a mute, buffer. Thank you. Sorry about that. I said some great stuff, guys. You really missed some great <laughs> stuff. Thank you, Dr. Betty, for helping us go through that. And you can see that there's a lot of thought and progression into how we want to grow and develop our MCC cadets. And the idea is that you see clearly how do you continue to grow and mature as a cadet member and how you can expand your opportunity to be able to assist and be involved as a response team. Are there any questions for our medical chief um, before we move to our next presentation? If you'd like to raise your hand or if you want to just check in with her, 
um, feel free to unmute your mic at this time and um, you can ask whatever's on your mind. 